British beauty blog essential.com, although it's spelled E-S-C-E-N-T-U-L, Dot com, uh, polled its readers to find out what men and women view as the perfect facial features to construct the perfect woman. So first, let's take a look at the perfect woman according to men. All right, so we, you, we can all look at this and you can see which famous actresses, of course, they've picked for this. This woman doesn't look to me like anyone that I would want to hang out with. She looks a little too Kardashian-y for me, and I don't, I don't know that I would want to spend any time with her, but let's look at the perfect woman according to women right now. Oh my God. Yeah. She doesn't look normal. Well, this is what women say a woman should look like, and then we wonder why women have all these issues. And you can see which actresses they've picked. Uh, both men and women picked the Megan Fox chin, interestingly so enough. apparently she's got a great chin. Yeah. And the, and the Mila Kunis uh, eyes. So there you go. Um, all right, this, we see this kind of stuff all the time. Oh, and I want to show you one other thing. So Jennifer Lawrence was on the cover of Flair magazine. She's beautiful. She's in her early 20s. She's got everything going on for her. But of course, yeah, they photoshopped her. So let's look at the cover first. So the, that's the cover on the left. And that's just the image of her on the right. Now, they actually don't look that different, right? But if you look a little closer, uh, you can see things like her fingers are actually a little bit longer on the Photoshop what? version. They've done some things with her cheekbones and her eyes. We've got a GIF, or as the kids say, a GIF of it. Let's look at that. Interesting. So you can see her, her it boobs are a little... Uh, it's sloppy Photoshop, because in order to bring in her waist, you'll notice they've got her arm bending backwards. Oh, they just yeah. sucked yeah. in the middle of the picture. The point there is that they're taking women that are already beautiful, mm -hmm. and then they do that. I mean, lengthening of the fingers. I know, like, it made me look down at my hand and, and <laughs> try to judge whether or not my fingers are acceptable. I, I mean, this is well, what leads to, do you like your my fingers? fingers? Totally, totally. Thank you. Yeah, I've been having trouble focusing because <laughs> of your fingers. <laughs> um, I think this is exactly what leads to the insecurities that women face today. I think men also have significant insecurities, you know, when it comes to body image and everything. But for women, it's like your lips got to be full and you got to have a small nose and long hair and big boobs, small waist. And it's this constant messaging that we get. And it's really difficult. You know, I made a quote once on the show that people really liked, and it's true. There's nothing in the world that's more expensive than insecurity. Right, because insecurities force you to go out there and spend money, whether it's you know anti-wrinkle cream or going out there and getting your breasts enlarged. It's so expensive to deal with all of that stuff. And I would love to preach and say, you know, accept yourself for who you are, but I would be extremely hypocritical. You know, I had my insecurities. I went out there and I dealt with my insecurities. I put makeup on for the show every day, and it's really hard not to cave into that pressure. Yeah. I think it not. I think it's bad for the psyche of a culture. Mm -hmm. I don't think it, it is just male, just female, or just male. Um, there's so little room uh, for for difference in our world now. I, even as we are expanding the the rights of of gays, as we are expanding the rights of the the LGBTQ community. Uh, at the same time, we're saying this is what beauty is supposed to look like, and not only do we need to alter photos of beautiful people to make them more what we imagine beauty should be, but now we're doing studies as to how we might combine people right. to find the ideal beauty. And men who find other things attractive are ashamed of it. Right, so if, you, uh, if you're a guy who likes a girl with a slightly bigger nose, let's say, then, my God, what a freak. Yeah, if, if there's any, uh, any particular thing that appeals to you that is not absolutely the norm, you feel like you're, you're ashamed and you but, need but, to. But, you know, there have been scientific studies into beauty and what people in general find attractive. And so you can focus on symmetry right. and, and, you know, certain things like that. And it has to do with our biological urges and our, you know, our needs to reproduce. You know, certain facial features and certain body proportions usually mean that a woman is more fertile, uh, is better for a reproduction, yada, yada. Um, but I do agree with you. I mean, it, it it's really scary to know that we do live in a society where everyone is pressured to look the same. And I think it's kind of up to us to kind of push back against that and do things that we're comfortable with and embrace our bodies and embrace the way we look. And again, I'm being hypocritical because I haven't embraced the way I look 
and I, I put on makeup every single day and I do my thing. But, but I, is that hypocrisy? Or I, just Is trying to look your best on a day-to-day -day basis? Beauty is, is that power. It, let's keep it real. Beauty is freaking power, okay? Especially for people that are in front of a camera. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend that my looks don't play a role in my success. Obviously, if I'm up against another woman and she's less attractive than me, I'm probably going to get that job over her. I mean, let's say we have the exact same qualifications. That's what the reality is. Right. And at the same time, Jennifer Grey was way more was appealing before she had her nose genericized. So she's a great example of this. So mm -hmm. she was in Dirty Dancing, of course, and she had her look was, you know, she had a, a bigger nose and it wasn't just that. Her, she had just a quirky sort of look and then she ended up getting all the plastic surgery. She did win Dancing with the Stars, but she hasn't done anything since then. And I think she looked much better back then. Is it right? fair to blame it all on her plastic surgery though? No, to maybe say, she like, made some bad career moves, yeah, I don't know. We but have no idea. Like, people always like to blame it on her nose I, job. Uh, I, I wasn't saying anything about how much work she got. Uh -huh. I'm just saying I found her way more appealing yeah. as the but, human being that she was yeah. than as the genericized version of herself that she became. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think in addition to all of the, the uh, genetic and, and evolutionary issues, uh, the search for symmetry and so on, at least for men, and I don't know what the distinction is gender-wise, there's a great deal of imprinting that goes on early childhood uh, and moments that cause these permanent grooves in the brain mm -hmm. uh, that lead to fetishism and uh, deviation that I do not think as being deviant, but rather as being the norm, the, the vast spectrum of norm. And I think it is time that both men and women began to embrace the idea that some people really like a huge freaking mole in the middle of the nose, and some people are into amputees, and some guys would go nuts for a woman with a hunchback. Yeah, you, know? you revealed a lot about yourself and here. I think it's, I, every chance I get. And, uh, the, and, I think, uh, and I think humanity needs to just start embracing the great beauty of all of it. Yeah. And that picture of the Pope hugging the guy with the growths all over his head. It didn't freak people out because the Pope was doing something good. It freaked people out because we're not supposed to embrace the unusual. Yeah. Uh, final thought on this. So obviously a lot of this has to do with just the messaging that we're getting constantly. Isn't there something a little weird about that it all comes from actors? So actors are getting Botox and they're getting all this chin implants, all this stuff where they can no longer move their faces, the very tool that they're supposed to use for their craft and their art. Uh, and then all these, it, it, that, something about how the insecurity that these people that want to be seen all the time are constantly changing themselves uh, and that, that their insecurity is then being pushed onto all of us because I don't think that the average person suffers from that level of insecurity that, these, that people that are in front of the camera, and obviously we're in front of the camera right this second, mm -hmm. but that there's something sort of different about that level of insecurity and wanting to be liked that then it's been pushed on regular people constantly. Yeah. Did that make any sense? I yeah, think did, I had something. Yeah, it totally right. did make sense. Like I've I've met a number of people in Los Angeles that are struggling actors. They're the most vain people on the planet and it's <laughs> not and it's because that's the nature of what they do. You have to look like this alien supermodel just in order to get cast in certain roles. I mean, if you look at all of the major celebrities, they're all perfect looking. And if they're not perfect looking, there's someone who's photoshopping them as they walk around and do, you know, and they're doing whatever they're doing. But I mean, that's just the nature of the beast. That's what the market responds to, Yeah. okay? So if the market's gonna respond to that, then they're gonna continue doing it. I, just one example is uh, Gabourey Sidibe. I'm yeah. sorry if I'm mispronouncing her name, but she was in that movie Precious, yeah. right? Which her performance was spectacular in that movie. It was one of the best movies I've ever seen. But she got criticized significantly for her weight. She was named as, you know, person of the year or something like that in one of these magazines. And people were outraged by it because they thought, oh, she's fat. She's, you know, supporting an, an unhealthy image and this and that. You're going to get criticized either way. You're either too beautiful or you're too right. ugly. So the way you do, you deal with it is to just tune them out and live your life.